Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to Terraformers. This is a new base building game that, you can probably guess, is themed around landing humans on Mars and terraforming the angry red planet. It's pretty fun, and the best way I can describe this game is that it's a lot like a challenging single-player board game. There's a lot of elements of strategy and puzzles, of exploration, exploitation, and rushing to meet some certain objective before everything comes crashing down under the weight of its own expectations. I should note the game is currently in an early access state, has been since it released in April. So I imagine there's a fair bit of development that still needs to occur, everything you see today is subject to change. But again, I think the game's pretty fun as it currently stands and certainly can absorb several hours of your time. Let's go ahead and jump into a new game. Now there are several different scenarios that we can pick from. Each one increases in difficulty as you gain mastery level by completing ex uh, levels and getting experience. The developers also recently added in the ability to create your own custom scenario, but I haven't messed with that myself. The Red Planet Awaits is pretty standard. It's the easiest way to play the game. It requires that you earn points, and that could be through terraforming progress, or bringing humans to Mars, or harvesting resources, etc. But afterwards, you'll then unlock several different paths with different objectives. The red path is about extracting lots of resources, the green path about placing life forms on uh, Mars, and the blue path about completely terraforming the planet and creating a second Earth. Then there's Per Aspera at Astra and Planet of Knowledge. I don't really know what these are about, though I can guess it has something to do with scientific progress or exploring space in some way. Now, I've only done a couple of scenarios myself. I've gotten up to Mastery Level 6. I'm going to be playing with the Green Path today. We're going to be a gardener for the planet and try to sustain the planet for lots of different life forms. And here we are. Now we get a few different resources to start and a couple of different buildings which we will be able to place. I believe if you complete a scenario and then launch directly into a new one, you'll have different options at the start. Uh, a couple different ways to play the game and have different starting resources, but I restarted so I think I've only got this available to me. So here is our starting city, New Ri Riyadh. I think, and this, these borders, represent all the different climate zones of the planet. Don't get too hung up on this, it's not like you're restricted to placing down cities in specific climate zones, it just can be helpful. Now the first thing we do is hire a leader. This person represents the leader of our colonization effort, and over time will retire and get replaced, but bring several different powerful abilities with them. So it's random who you're going to get, we have Gustav and we have Thomas as our starting options. Artificial intelligence is kind of nice. You can see some skills down here. We can explore a location. Actually, everyone always has exploration as an option. We can generate power, and we can get extra projects, which basically comes down to extra building options per turn and gain some science. We also have a specialization, and this is a passive ability that will continue through the entire campaign, no matter what leaders you pick. So this always sticks around and can be very powerful. Increasing my science production for every robot I construct. That could be very good for me, because in the green path, science is really, really important. But what's the other option? We have Thomas, who can mine out resources for us at the cost of power, or place down a supply station, okay, and then silicates boost. Yeah, I have to say, I think Gustav's going to be the winner for us here. I know that science is going to be important. I don't know how many robots I'll get, but at least it gives me an idea what I should build for. So let's do that. Gustav's going to stick around for, I think, around like 12 turns or something around there, and then he'll get replaced. Now let's take a look at some of the UI interface over here. First, the most important thing is support. Support represents how uh, high the morale is for all the people currently living on Mars. And the longer this game goes on, the higher the demand is going to be. Support will start going into the negative, draining away from this pool. If you ever go down to zero, you lose. That means the longer the game goes on, the harder it is to keep up with demand, and eventually you will fail. You've got to beat your objective before then. It's kind of a race against the clock. But there are different buildings we'll be able to place which help build up extra support, so our goal is to build up a nice healthy bank before it starts draining away. There's also a lot of resources to consider. We have food, power, science, water, nitrates, silicates, titanium, and tritium. These are all important for development for various different reasons. I'll use them to construct buildings. So for example, if we go to the city down over here, I'll need a place down in headquarters first. Um, I don't really care too much where it is. Uh, how about right along over here? This should be fine. Okay, we'll do this. And then we have something here for a greenhouse farm. It does take some water, but it will generate one food per turn. So if I were to place this, let's say, over 
I don't really want to use this area up. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. We can do something kind of like this, I think, and that'll be fine. Now we'll start generating some food, and you can see this is going to go up. Once we get this up to 30, I'll be able to place down a habitation module, but we'll come back to that as of next turn. There's also a few different uh, factors here for the terraforming progress of the planet. We have temperature, oxygen, ocean level, and atmosphere. All of this is going to be very important, especially in this scenario, because as we place down different life forms, they're going to have different requirements of each climate zone in order to survive. So the better we terraform the planet, the more options we're going to have. Beyond that, let's also take a look at the city down over here, and you can see there are several different exploration points around us. If I'm willing to use the exploration feature and spend, in this case, one energy, I can explore something nearby. So let's say this one right here, a big titanium deposit. I'm hoping there's going to be a mine option right here. Let's click on that. We get some titanium nitrates and tritium for simply exploring here. And then, yes, sure enough, there is a titanium deposit located right here. I am absolutely going to be willing to spend some, uh, some titanium and some power in order to construct a mine because then I'll get a resource per turn. But you'll notice I can't do this right now because we do not control the location. Every different zone you pick up needs to be controlled by the city, and the way you control it is by building up your population, either with humans or with robots. That's where this habitation module becomes very important. So let's go ahead and move on to the next turn. That's going to get me up to 30 food. Uh, at the beginning of every turn, you have the option to choose a new building. I do very much want things like laboratories, but I'm not going to have any silicates or nitrates for a while, nor tritium. So I'm going to get some extra water for food, uh, hopefully, and continue building up some population. But these are all pretty weak buildings at the start. You could also opt to take none of these different options and simply convert it into an extra science. But for now, let's just go ahead and take one of these. So this functions like a card. You get access to one new building every turn. Let's go over here, and I'm going to place down this habitation module. We're going to do it right over here. This is going to give us one extra population. With that extra population, well, apparently we can now research an extra project. I wasn't expecting that. Um, we'll take another habitation module. Sure, why not? And then we can click on this and expand our city to pick up a different location. This is the only one I've explored so far, but it's also one that I very much want because titanium is important. So let's click on this. Now we control the zone, and I can build a mine at the cost of power and titanium. Boom! Just like that, I am now producing some resources. Let's also go ahead and do some more exploration. I will go for this over here. We get some tritium and titanium, find an option for a tritium deposit, so another mine here. That's pretty good. As I continue exploring, I'm hoping to get a lot of other useful things. I very badly am going to need water at some point, though. Now, the further you have to explore away from your city, the more costly it is in terms of energy to explore. So this will cost me two energy instead of one. So I'll need to come back to some of that. For now, let's go ahead and move on to the next turn. We have unlocked a trade route. Trade routes are how we are going to get resources back uh, from Earth. We have to give them something in order to get something back. Makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, let's see, a soil factory. This actually wouldn't be bad, but it does take 22 nitrates to build. But it would be worth two food per turn if I set things up nicely. That's not bad. That said, I think science is going to be more important, so we're going to go ahead and grab a laboratory that costs nitrates and silicates to get some science per turn, which I'll be able to spend on various different species on the planet. Let's do some more exploration. I'm desperately looking for some water mines. Did not get it. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a pretty serious hindrance at some point, because without water, it's pretty much impossible for me to continue building up my population in a good way. So I'm very limited in what I can do here. Now we have resource outputs. I could go for some nitrates, some silicates, or some tritium. I guess I'm going to go for some silicates since I haven't seen a deposit for this yet, and I know I'm going to need it. We could place down some windmills. That's going to be an option on an empty space on the planet, if that's something I want. Instead, I think I'd rather grab the public baths, because this can get me a lot of extra support per turn from adjacent population buildings. And this is where laying out your city carefully can be very helpful. For example, if I were to place this right here, I would get an extra four support per turn, which can really start to add up over time. And you need to place a few of those down in order to survive. I'm going to explore a few different directions here, hoping we find a good water deposit. Uh, let's place... Let's place this down here. This gets us some nitrates and science. We find a bit of food, which is pretty fortunate. There is water, so I'm really hoping we're going to find something over here pretty soon. 
In the meantime, I now could place down a laboratory, and I'm going to do that. Let's do so right over here. I'm going to leave space for a farm, and then maybe some way of boosting farms over here at some point. This is going to let me get some science per turn, and as I said, that's going to be very, very important for us. Let's go ahead and move on. Exploration satellites is something you pretty much always get for free from Earth at some point. Every, like, three turns or so, you'll get a free exploration somewhere on the planet. It is best to use that far away so that you save as much energy as possible. Robots. Now, this could make a pretty big difference since I'm finding that getting population is going to be difficult without water and food. So we're definitely going to pick this thing up. Take some power, take some titanium, and we also know that robots are going to work very nicely with Gustav, so we want to do that. Let's go Go ahead and do an exploration action <sighs> along both of the water deposits. Is that the top priority? Probably. I really need to find water, so let's go ahead and click on that. We found rich soil, so nitrate, silicates, water. Sometimes you're going to find some special feature in an area over here, so we could place down a nitrates mine if we control this to get two nitrates. That's pretty good. Or lots of water for a pretty good amount of food. Not bad. Let's use the satellites and explore here. You still get the resources from exploring, which is nice. Still not seeing any water anywhere. That is going to be a pretty huge problem. This is a rough starting city. But let's go over here and place down a robot hub. Uh, where do I want to place it? Let's say... Let's say over here for now, in case there's a good way to boost some of that up. Now, robots, in this case, I got two of them. These guys also count for grabbing some additional territory. So let's go ahead and place something down over here. Grab the tritium mine. We can get that going. I have just enough titanium for that. And I'm going to save this last expansion point, because so far, nothing over here really excites me. I'd like to see what my options are over in this direction first, if you don't mind. So let's go ahead and move on to the next turn. Okay, rising expectations. This is going to continue to be an issue. So you can see we are now losing some support per turn. We can get around that with something like, let's say, this entertainment center. This is relatively cheap and acceptable for me. I'm happy to pick this thing up, so let's do that now. We can go over here, we can place this like so, and boom, now we're getting a fair bit of extra support from both of these structures. So now I'm actually right back to where I was before, and we're not going to be losing any progress. Let's go for some exploration, let's say, over here. Okay, we found a lava tube. Now, eventually, you're going to be finding places on the planet where you can settle down a new city. For example, this is a flat plains and allows for a new city. Same thing is true over with a lava tube, and there are sometimes some nice little anomalies that you'll be able to use. In order to found a city, you need 30 food and 10 water, and this is one of the reasons I'm saying water is going to be a problem. It's kind of hard to build far away from my starting city. This does mean that I have no interest in grabbing this territory over here, there's probably water over here. Placing down a city right here actually could be really, really good for me. Mm. Let's go ahead and move on for a minute. Let's see what else we get. More robots. I do like that idea. Let's go ahead and pick that up. I'm going to do another exploration action right here and see what we get. Absolutely nothing useful. Okay, so uh, it's going to be difficult to pick up some new zones if I'm not going to get anything useful here. Um, I really hate to spend this right now if I don't have to. Could place down some additional robots. I think that's probably okay. It's not going to cost me anything. We now can grab three zones. <sighs> Need to find water or something. This is going to be very difficult. Technological advancements. This comes up once in a while. You're going to have some sort of a special perk power-up that you can place on a city at the cost of some science. So, for example, costs 15 science, but then all of these technologies cost 25% less later. Or, whenever we found a new city, it starts with two expansions. Now, that's not bad. Or, self-learning AI increases my science production for every science we start producing. Now, this I need, because getting lots of science is going to be very, very good for me. Another laboratory, I think this is fair. We'll go ahead and pick that up. Let's do another exploration action right over... This is kind of far away from the city. I hate to do it. The thing is, in order to uh, place down a new city, not only do you need resources, you also are going to need to have explored every zone around it. So we could continue exploring over here, uh, and this would give me enough water to do something. I guess I can do that. Boom. Get some water. Get some food. Okay. So one more exploration action. If we get a little bit of food soon, we could place down another city over here. And I did find some water over here, so this would be a pretty good place for a city at some point.
Let's go back over here. I'm going to place down another laboratory, again, leaving space in case I can find something that's going to buff it up. This lets me start getting more science per turn. Now, if we have an excess of something, like, for example, this tritium, I can start exporting it to Earth, but I have to buy something in return. I'm going to start buying some extra food because I really want to place down another city as soon as possible. I would be tempted to place down more greenhouse farms, but so far that's not looking like a very good idea. So we're going to ignore that. I will place down some extra expansions over here. This is going to leave me some space to work with. These empty tiles may not have anything exciting on them, but that's okay. We'll figure out something to do with these a little bit later. In the meantime, I can also expand up here. Now, notice by being far away from the city, it's going to cost me some approval, which is a bit dangerous. But I want access to this because if I get myself, let's say, a lot of titanium, I wouldn't mind getting a bunch of passive nitrate uh, production. That could be useful. We also have some exploration available. Let's go ahead and use that right here so that we can hopefully uh, place down a city in a little bit. And for now, I don't think there's much else we can do. Okay, uh, let's see, what else we got here? Landing pads. Now this I can place on one of these empty tiles on the planet. This will let me have an extra trade route. There's also the road paver depot for a bunch of extra expansions or an igloo, which is another housing unit, uh, which can be pretty good for me. Costs a teeny bit more than a regular habitation module. Uh, but it's protected from radiation if I ever set down a building that could do that. I think I'm going to take a landing pad because I might need some extra trade to make up for the fact that I'm having a hard time actually getting very far. So let's go ahead and place this. This lets me offload, let's say, some extra tritium in favor of a little bit of extra food. Do you want to do more exploration or something else? Uh, let's see. We could start getting some free power out of Gustav, and I think I'm going to because we've got enough power for what I need right now, but uh, power is going to be hard to come by. I'm generating none, and we're going to need lots of exploration in the future. He is retiring now, so we're going to get a replacement. What do we have? Tariq, you are going to let us overwork a city, losing support per population, but increase my water production for every new three we start producing. That's not a great ability, but... That water's pretty tempting. Or a police station. Extra comfort of living if we place this down. The other option is Alex. Alex would let us start getting some nitrates, and we could just start farming out some extra food and convert a non-owned water deposit into ocean. That's actually really good for us. So let's go ahead and pick him up. What else we got here? A courthouse for comfort of living. Tempting. Not too important this second. Magnetic fusion power plants. Uh, this would upset people if I place it next to them, but lets me start getting some extra power. Tempting. Also lose some comfort, which kind of hurts my support. A tuber farm? I don't think that's very different from a greenhouse farm, except that it doesn't cost water. Which actually would be really good for me right now, wouldn't it? Let's place down a tuber farm. I'm going to go over here and place this right along here. Perfect. And then I'm going to place down the self-learning AI because as I start generating more science, I know that I want to start getting even more. So we're going to start growing exponentially here. Next turn, I will be able to place down another one of these cities, which is going to be great. Do I want to do an exploration action? Or I actually could just place down a farm and place it right now. Now that I think about it, that's even better. Let's do it. Boom. Going to go right over here. We're going to found a city. New Jerusalem. All right. No mood bonuses over here. There is fertile soil, which is good for placing down food, so I'll save that over in this direction. How about right over here I can... Yeah, this should be fine. Right? Yes? Let's, 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 let's do it right here. Headquarters placed, which is great. And now we have an extra city. Now, I can't do a ton with it, but we have a lot of extra building space, and if I can grow, I'll get myself a water mine, which will let me start doing a lot more. Let's go ahead and move on to that next turn. Uh, let's see. Titanium, water, or power? Ooh, uh, probably water. Let's go ahead and do that. Another landing pad? Probably not. Delivery drones, extra support, and also robots. Now, see, that's just really great. So let's do that. We're going to place this right along over here, which gets me more approval. And I'm going to have an extra slot, which we can use right here. And next turn, I should be able to get myself a mine for some water. So that's looking a whole lot better. Over here, um, I could place down the public baths, which would get me a lot of extra support, but I don't know if that's the top priority right now. I think I'd rather go ahead and start generating two food right here at the cost of some of that water that I just grabbed, so that's going to be a lot nicer. Uh, let's see, exploration. When you place down a new city, um, your exploration gets cheaper because everything's now more within range of a city, so that's not so bad. Um, I tend to look for whatever's like the most expensive 
and then go from there. For example, let's do some exploration right here. Get some science, get some water, find a bit more over here, black sand dunes, that's kind of fun. All right, I'm gonna jump forward a little bit because I've kind of shown you a lot of the base game so far, but I haven't gotten to any meaningful terraforming or life forms, and I wanna do that. Ah, actually, speaking of life forms, okay, so we are gonna gain access to some form of bacterium. So we have Methanogenium and we have Dinococcus. Now, these guys are going to have different climate requirements in order to place them down, but if we can get a bacteria spreader, which costs a pretty good amount of science, we can start spreading bacteria over the planet. And you can see this would provide, let's say, some heat per turn or some atmosphere per turn. I don't care that much about atmosphere because eventually I'll place down plants and that'll do a lot of the job. But what I do need is water and heat in order to get those plants. So this makes the most sense. We'll pick this one up. What else we got here? We have a gas factory to get some of that atmosphere per turn. Costs a lot of power to start with. Not sure I care. Modular apartments for extra housing or more tuber farms. Honestly, I don't like any of these, so I'm just going to get a little extra science. Start getting up toward this bacteria spreader. This is the entire point of this scenario. We are trying to get life forms. We need 20 prestige, and I only get one from bacteria in every climate zone it has been placed. So we really need to get this going. This is top priority. This is why science is so important on the green path. Okay, we have the 20 science I need to place down the bacteria spreader. Let's go ahead and do that right over here. Now we'll be able to start placing down some bacteria. So this is my only option. We can see several different zones that are available. Not all of them are going to be suitable. You can see here several different stats. We have the temperature, the oxygen, and the rainfall level in each of these different zones. Most of them are going to be in the negative at the beginning of the game. Uh, we'll go ahead and start doing it right here next to the bacteria spreader so it gets the least time. It'll take 11 turns for this to come back to us, and the bacteria spreader will then be able to move on to another zone. We want to get this in as many zones as possible. So let's go ahead and get started right over here. There's the bacteria. All right, step one complete. New leaders available. An animals expert would be great for us so we can get life forms faster. Like that idea. There's also recycling over here. Sewage treatment plants for free. Titanium, titanium. I have to go with the animals. It just makes the most sense for us. Um, what else we got here? Food factories. Eco homes, which is good for housing, and then of course an oxygen factory. Oxygen wouldn't be bad, but I can't do a lot with it. My biggest problem right now is I don't have a passive way of getting power, so I'm having to trade for it pretty heavily, and that is going to slow me down by a lot. We have a new leader available. I'm going to go for Henry Carnegie over here for global warming. This is going to mean that even when I don't want to explore, since I'm not going to have a lot of energy to spare, I can at least have something I can click on that gets me some atmosphere and heat every turn, which is not bad. Also, cheaper mines could end up being kind of nice for me. I'm a little concerned about my lack of power, so I'm going to be getting some more buildings there. And let's go ahead and do some CO2 imports. Now take a look over here, you can see that by placing down the bacteria in now up to three zones, I believe, we're generating a pretty decent amount of some heat. We're going to get up to tier one and then eventually tier two and tier three. Every tier you complete is going to get you some extra support and that's a pretty helpful way to stay on top of all the nastiness that's going to be coming your way once people's expectations are unmet. But a high temperature is going to be great. The real trick now is I need to find a way to get an ocean built up. And the best way to do that is to find water deposits and then kind of destroy them and start releasing water into the planet. One risk to that, you can see here, is as the ocean level rises, uh, certain buildings could become submerged. You can fix that by spending some titanium to build a dike in order to protect yourself. So that's a very important thing to watch for before you let the ocean level get too high. Case in point, the temperature level has increased to level 1. We get an extra 100 support. That is fantastic. And if we take a look at some of the zones... It does look like, it look like in a couple of places, at least, their temperature has increased up by one level. That's going to be very important for us once we eventually get to a point of placing down things like, let's say, trees. Now we know we need uh, tree level one, or sorry, temperature level one in order to get an alpine forest. I also need rainfall. If I can do this, though, I like, get one level of ocean, which is going to take another 20 points there, that would be enough rainfall to place down some trees. Trees would mean that we can start getting not only some extra support if we have cities nearby, but also start passively generating both atmosphere and oxygen and a lot of prestige. So managing the uh, temperature and the terraforming of your planet is very, very important for the green path. Not gonna lie, I'm really struggling right now because I, I seem to be in a very unlucky position where I just 
can't find water pretty much anywhere. It's a serious issue. Um, very serious issue, in fact. Uh, okay. Well, we can place down a city over here for sure. That gets me a little approval. Notice how fast the approval is going down, by the way. It's, um, yeah, that's a serious concern. Uh, uh, um, well, let's think. Hang on. What can I do? We could place down some extra food generation. I don't know how valuable that really is, but we can do it. I can place down a luxury workshop, which is going to allow us to... Get some extra support per turn to at least staunch the bleeding a little bit. And then I guess I don't see much reason not to go ahead and place down some robots. And maybe even an oxygen factory over here. Which is going to let us continue terraforming. And I did not mean to move on to the next turn just now. But okay, that's fine. Uh, the idea being... Yeah, let's get public baths for approval for sure. I can now place down a zone here for a pit mine. Which we'll do. We can place one over here for another titanium mine, and I don't really need more open space. I need gosh dang water. That's all I need so I can start releasing the oceans. Without that, like, what can I do? Answer, not much. Oh my gosh, okay, we finally get an ocean level increase. I had to build a city specifically to get over here and get some more water, but it worked. Okay, we're at level one, which means now we actually have some rainfall, which means I can finally place down some plants. And this is what's gonna get me some of the big prestige, as well as other terraforming progress. Uh, the Mediterranean shrubs appear to be the best if I'm able to get them. So I say we take a look and see if we can do that. Right over here, yeah, that works for me. We can get into New Jerusalem, which means we're gonna get some bonuses. I like it. In fact, let's go ahead and get a second plant spreader up running as quickly as we can, because the more plants I have going at any given time, the better off I'm going to be. Oxygen level goes up as well. Okay, little bit by little bit. And the temperature level has maxed out. Unfortunately, the uh, expectations continue to grow well out of control here. Um, <laughs> An animal spreader, at some point, we're going to want to have more of these. As we're getting oxygen and stuff in place, some of these zones might be able to start sustaining life. For example, right up over here, it is totally possible to place down some rabbits. So we're going to go ahead and do exactly that. That's going to get me a fair bit of prestige. No terraforming progress, but I'm very close to complete... Wait. Oh, wait. Did we actually beat it? Oh, wait. What am I talking about? We beat it! Oh, yay! Okay, never mind. Placing down the bunnies was the last goal. All right, we did better than I thought here. It looked like things were looking really, really bad, but we actually came out on top of this one. And that's where you can see that increasing the difficulty bit by little bit, so the expectations are more demanding, and there are less resources to start with. That would be pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and start leveling up, which is unlocking new content. Usually you get new buildings, but in this case, it looks like I also get some additional uh, advisors or leaders. So a bacteria expert, an urban planner, and a space religion space wizard man. Oh, that seems kind of fun. I like it. Okay, cool. Then we get up to level eight. We get some new stuff. Natural reservations, cloud seeding, and expansion hubs. All of that seems pretty great. Anyway, that's Terraformers, guys. And again, every different scenario has a different objective, but... This one ended up going really well for me. I mean, I know I struggled to find water, but we found a way to make it work. I wasn't really in any loss of losing. Alternatively, when I did the red path, I was literally one turn away from loss. So it can be pretty tough at times. And if you feel like it wasn't tough enough, no problem. As you gain these mastery levels, just go ahead and start ramping up that difficulty until they get a little bit ridiculous. That's all I have to show you for today, though, so thank you all very much for watching. If you like what you saw, then you can find a link in the description down below. Otherwise, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.